Many of you guys are asking me if there will be a fourth stimulus check and when will the social security benefits be increased by $200 a month. Well in this video everybody, I will be answering all of your questions. So just be sure to stand to the end of this video. And if you believe that the social security benefits must be raised by $200 a month, then let's get this video to 1000 likes. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel everybody and share this video with your friends and family. Alright everybody, so the US economy is surely on its way to recovery. Household income rose at a record pace of 21.1% in March, as the third round of stimulus checks helped deal with an economic revival. According to Wall Street Journal, that 21.1% was the largest monthly increase for government records since 1959. And this is all thanks to the three rounds of stimulus checks that have been passed so far. So yeah guys, it's clear that stimulus checks are helping the US economy recover. Recent data continues to prove that another round of stimulus payments will benefit the economy. Lawmakers in Congress need to continue to push for another stimulus payment, but some of you have already begun receiving a fourth stimulus payment from the IRS. According to the IRS, a fourth round of stimulus payments was sent to eligible Social Security beneficiaries at the beginning of this month. Over 1 million plus of payments have been sent out to eligible people, Social Security beneficiaries who didn't file a 2020 or 2019 tax turn and didn't use the non filers tool last year, received a payment from the IRS as well. The IRS has reported then more than 19 million payments, totaling more than $26 billion, went to these beneficiaries, including Social Security Retirement, Survivor, or Disability Beneficiaries. So far everybody, Joe Biden's American Families Plan includes paid family leave, universal pre-kindergarten, free community college, and child care. But Democrats in the House and the Senate still want Biden to include another round of stimulus payments for Americans that are still financially struggling because of the crisis. And some Democratic lawmakers, everybody, are also urging Joe Biden to extend unemployment benefits in the child tax credit payment program, in addition to recurring stimulus payments. Back in March, Congress extended a weekly $300 unemployment payment until early September. The unemployment insurance system is also a critical lifeline to workers at the hardest times. During the crisis, it saved millions of people from poverty and helped people put food on the table. But the system is in desperate need of reform and strengthening, and this is why President Biden is also committed to unemployment insurance reform. President Biden wants Congress to work to automatically adjust the length and amount of unemployment insurance benefits that unemployed workers receive during the current economic conditions. And this will ensure future legislative delay doesn't undermine economic recovery. In addition folks, a group of about 40 Democratic lawmakers asked President Biden to overhaul the unemployment system by permanently enacting some pandemic relief measures. In a letter to the president, the lawmakers argued that traditional jobless benefits failed to, relic, failed to reflect the realities of the modern workforce, as well as providing far too little aid for families when people lose their jobs. The signers include Senator Bernie Sanders and Senate Finance Committee Chair Ron Wyden. The lawmakers wrote, the crisis has revealed many cracks in our country's unemployment insurance system. So everybody, the lawmakers want the unemployment system to provide more generous benefits, because right now, Jobless aid typically replaces about 40 cents for every $1 earned on the job. An increase in monthly social security benefits would help millions of Americans financially. The idea of increasing monthly social security benefits is not new to lawmakers in Congress. Several Democratic senators, in fact, have teamed up to propose giving social security beneficiaries an extra $200 per month during the span of the crisis. In addition, guys, the plan was put forward a couple months ago by Senator Elizabeth Warren and Ron Wyden, as well as Chuck Schumer. According to their proposal, the extra income would apply to all Social Security, veterans, and supplemental security income beneficiaries. And this bonus money will continue through the end of 2021, adding up to an extra $4,000 over the next two years. I personally believe everybody that this plan is going to be really amazing. Many Americans support the increase in monthly Social Security benefits, so it has to be done. Senator Warren told CNBC, that increasing Social Security benefits is the quickest way to get money out the door during an economic crisis. Mr. President, a few weeks ago, President Biden introduced an infrastructure plan, or at least that's what Democrats are calling it. In fact, a substantial portion of this bill goes to Democrat priorities that have nothing to do with infrastructure. From support for big labor to a new civilian climate corps to advance environmental justice. Mr. President, President Biden's infrastructure proposal would cost a lot of money well north of $2 trillion. So how does the president plan to pay for this legislation? Unsurprisingly, the president is proposing tax hikes, notably a substantial hike in the corporate tax rate. 
Mr. President, there are two sources Democrats like to go to when it comes to paying for their spending. Corporations and prosperous Americans. In fact, Democrats tend to speak about corporations and well-off Americans as if they are a bottomless source of funding for government programs. And as, Demo and as if Democrats can endlessly hike taxes on these individuals and businesses without consequences. When Republicans object to the prospect of major tax hikes, Democrats cry that Republicans are just protecting wealthy corporate cronies. A deeply ironic charge when you consider that Democrats want to include a tax cut for wealthy Democrat donors and Hollywood types in this same infrastructure package. The real reason for Republicans' concern, of course, Mr. President, is quite different. Republicans are concerned about substantial tax hikes on any individual or business because we know that taxation has economic consequences. It's something that Democrats should know as well. It's basic economics, after all, but they don't seem capable of grasping it. Taxation has consequences. Tax hikes have consequences. And big tax hikes, Mr. President, have big consequences, usually negative ones. The corporate tax hike Democrats are talking about will have negative consequences for American businesses. And that means it will have negative consequences for American workers. And that's a problem. Mr. President, three years ago, Republicans passed major tax reform legislation. Along with substantial tax cuts for middle-class Americans, this legislation cut America's corporate tax rate. Why? Well, at the time we passed this legislation, the United States had the highest corporate tax rate in the developed world, plus an outdated international tax system. Both of those things put U.S. businesses at a major disadvantage next to their foreign counterparts. And they discouraged foreign companies from moving to and investing in the United States. Our outdated tax system had also resulted in a wave of inversions. That's tax professional speak for companies moving their headquarters overseas. According to Bloomberg, between 2004 and 2016, 36 American-based companies inverted. Needless to say, Mr. President, those inversions resulted in a loss of American jobs and domestic investment. A piece in the Wall Street Journal reported that one accounting firm estimates that the U.S. lost $510 billion from cross-border mergers and acquisitions between 2004 and 2016. Republicans knew that if we wanted to boost job creation here at home and improve opportunities for American workers, we needed to address the high corporate tax rate and put American companies on a more competitive footing internationally. And so we cut the corporate tax rate.